Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya O Sutta of Great Intellect, Thou art extremely blessed and omniscient. By Thy favor I am gratified to satiety again and again. My mind rejoices much on hearing this old anecdote about Devaraj. Please narrate another story, equally increasing devotion to Shiva. Nowhere in the world are those who drink intoxicating beverages honored with liberation. But in regard to the nectar of the story of Shiva, it is different. When drunk, it straightway accords salvation. Thou art blessed, blessed indeed. Blessed, blessed is the story of Shiva, on hearing which a man attains Shiva Loka. Sutta said, O Shonaka, please listen. I shall tell you, though it is a great secret, since you are the foremost among Vedic scholars and a leading devotee of Shiva. There is a seaside village, Bashkala, where sinful people bereft of Vedic virtue reside. They are wicked debauchees with deceptive means of livelihood, atheists, farmers bearing weapons, and adulterous rogues. They know nothing about true knowledge, detachment, or true virtue. They are brutish in their mental makeup and take great interest in listening to evil gossip and slander. People of different castes are equally roguish, never paying attention to their duties. Always drawn to worldly pleasures, they are ever engrossed in one evil action or another. All the women, too, are equally crooked, whorish, and sinful. Evil-tempered, loose in morals, they are devoid of good behavior and disciplined life. In the village Bashkala, populated by wicked people, there was a base brahmana named Binduga. He was a wicked sinner traversing evil paths. Although he had a beautiful wife, he was enamored of a prostitute. His passion for her completely upset his mind. Overwhelmed by Cupid's arrows, he forsook his devoted wife, Chanchula, and indulged in sexual dalliance with the prostitute. Many years thus elapsed without any abatement in his evil action. Afraid of violating her chastity, Chanchula, though smitten by Cupid, bore her distress calmly for a while. But later on, as her youthful passion and boisterous virility increased, Cupid's onslaught became extremely unbearable for her, and she ceased strictly adhering to her virtuous conduct. Unknown to her husband, she began to indulge in sexual intercourse with a sinful paramour at night. Fallen thus from sattvic virtues, she went ahead with her evil ways. O sage, once Binduga saw his wife amorously indulging in sexual intercourse with her paramour at night. Seeing his wife thus defiled by the paramour, he furiously rushed at them. When the roguish, deceitful paramour saw that the wicked Binduga had returned to the house, he fled from there immediately. The wicked Binduga caught hold of his wife and with threats and abuses struck her again and again. The whorish, wicked woman, Chanchula, thus beaten by her husband, became infuriated and spoke to her wicked husband. Foul-minded that you are, you indulge in sexual intercourse with the harlot every day. You have discarded me, your wife, ever ready to serve you with my youthful body. I am a youthful maiden, endowed with beauty, and mentally agitated by lust. 
Tell me, what other course can I take when I am denied the amorous sport with my husband? I am very beautiful and intoxicated with the flush of fresh youth. Deprived of sexual intercourse with you, I am extremely depressed. How can I bear the pangs of passion? Sutta said, That base Brahmana Binduga, when addressed thus by his wife, foolish and averse to his own duties, said to her, What you have said with your mind agitated by passion is true indeed. Please listen, my dear wife. I shall tell you something that will benefit you. You need not be afraid. You go ahead with your sexual sports with any number of paramours. No fear need enter your mind. Give them enough sexual pleasure and extract as much wealth as you can from them. You must hand over all the amount to me. You know that I am enamored of my concubine. Thus, our mutual interests will be assured. Sutta said, Binduga's wife, Chanchula, on hearing these words of her husband, became extremely delighted and assented to his vicious proposal. Having thus entered into their nefarious mutual contract, the two wicked persons, husband and wife, fearlessly went ahead with their evil actions. A great deal of time was thus wasted by the foolish couple indulging in their vicious activities. The wicked Binduga, the Brahmana with a Sudra woman for his concubine, died after some years and fell into hell. The foolish fellow endured distress and torture in hell for many days. He then became a ghost in the Vindhya mountains, continuing to be terribly sinful. After the death of her husband, the wicked Binduga, the woman Chanchala continued to stay in her house with her sons. The woman foolishly continued her amorous dalliance with her paramours till she lost her youthful charms. Due to divine intercession, on an auspicious occasion she happened to go to the Gokarna Shiva temple with her kinsmen. Casually moving about here and there with her kinsmen, she happened to take her bath in a holy pond as a normal routine affair. A scholar of divine wisdom was conducting a discourse on the holy Shiva Purana in the temple, some of which she happened to hear. The portion that fell on her ears described that after death, the Yamadutas would force red-hot iron into the vaginal passage of women who indulge in sexual intercourse with a paramour. This narrative of Shiva Purana, intended to increase detachment, made the woman tremble with fear. At the end of the discourse, when the people dispersed, the terrified woman approached the scholarly Brahmana and spoke to him in confidence. O oh, noble sir! I performed many ignoble activities without knowing my real duties. O oh Lord, blinded by lust, I spent the whole of my youth in incontinent prostitution. Today, on hearing your learned discourse, full of sentiments of non-attachment, I have become extremely terrified. Fie upon me, a foolish sinner of a woman deluded by lust, censurable, clinging to worldly pleasures and averse to my own duties. For a fleeting glimpse of evanescent pleasure, I unknowingly committed a great sin that produces excessive distress, a criminal action. Alas, I do not know which terrible goal this will lead me to. My mind has always been turned to evil ways. Which wise man will come to my succor? How shall I face the terrible messengers of Yama at the time of death? How shall I feel when they tie nooses forcibly round my neck? How shall I endure the mincing of my body to pieces in hell? How shall I endure the special torture for fallen women that is excessively painful? Agitated with misery, how can I work peacefully during the day? How shall I get peaceful sleep during the night? Alas, I am doomed in every respect. O oh, adverse fate! 
I was led astray from the path of my duty that would have bestowed all happiness. O oh, Brahmana, my sin is so great that it cannot be washed away, even if I take ablutions in the Ganga for a hundred years or perform a hundred sacrifices. What shall I do? Where shall I go? I am falling into the ocean of hell. Who in this world can save me? O oh, noble sir, thou art my preceptor. I seek refuge in thee. Sutta said, the intelligent Brahmana mercifully lifted up Chanchala, who, disgusted with worldly affairs, had fallen at his feet. That Brahmana then spoke as follows. <laughs> 